Do you like this sweater? Jared Leto gave it to me and I've always been on the fence about it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 small details you missed on Schitt's Creek. Who's the lady in the back? It's Moira. Flattering. It's a family portrait, Roland. You're my Mariah Carey. What is it? Just wanted one last look. For this list, we're looking at amazing small details and Easter eggs found throughout the show's six seasons. Since we're going to be going through various storylines that took place on the show, a spoiler alert is in effect. Had you picked up on any of these? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Seeing the Creek We spent countless hours at places like the Rosebud Motel, Rose Apothecary, and Café Tropical throughout the course of the show. Yet the creek after which the town is named remained a mystery for the longest time. Hard to believe this is our first trip down to the creek. In fact, it wasn't until the premiere of the final season that viewers got to see it when Johnny and Moira took a stroll to have a lovely picnic there. It was a nice treat for fans of the show, who finally got to see the landmark. Well, you're here now, Moira, and so am I. And with your career behind you, we'll be able to take advantage of more days like this. And it was just as beautiful as anyone could have imagined. We'd say it was worth the wait. Number 9. The Rose's Portrait Oh my god! Where did you find this, honey? Every good wealthy family needs a lavish portrait of themselves. Before their financial demise, the Roses were no exception. So when the grand piece gets to town in Season 3, Johnny and Moira's instinct is to find a place for it. I can't tell if this room is just very, very small or if this portrait is very, very big. Ultimately, though, they realize they don't need it anymore. <laughs> But this episode wasn't the only time the portrait made an appearance. In fact, it can be seen as part of the backdrop in the show's holiday special. That ship sailed hours ago, dear. Literally. Alexis and Stavros are on his father's yacht by now. Off to Capri. Not only that, it hangs behind the roses in the pilot as they find out they've lost their money. They're still looking for him. They think he's in the Caymans. He was our business manager. He's supposed to pay taxes. It's just one example of the care the show put into developing the family story, weaving their past and present together. Number 8. A Mariah Carey Wedding Patrick and David's wedding is a deeply sentimental affair. I can't believe this is happening. Patrick's vows are extremely profound and personal, with nods to significant moments in his and David's relationship. Namely, he called David his Mariah Carey when he declared his love for him. You're my Mariah Carey. Which the legendary singer herself reacted to on Twitter. So it's only fitting that he incorporates lines from her song Always Be My Baby here, especially since, according to Dan Levy, the lyrics reflect their dynamic. Boy, don't you know you can't escape me? Cause you know you'll always be my baby. And remember the lovely but treacherous hike where Patrick proposed? He references that too, with a line about climbing 1,000 mountains for David. I'm gonna keep this very short because I, I think you already know that I would climb a thousand mountains for you. These details ensured that the ceremony felt anchored in their love story. Number 7. Wendy's Associate So, David, this is quite the resume. If I ever need a performance artist, I know who to call. Who could ever forget Wendy, David's boss when he worked at Blouse Barn? The two crossed paths again in Season 5 at the flea market. David Rose. <laughs> would you look at that? If this isn't a full circle moment, then I'm not twice divorced. David and Stevie are there to sell Rose Apothecary products, and it just so happens that Wendy and her partner have a booth as well. Interestingly, David gets a sense of deja vu upon meeting him. You look very familiar. Have I seen you in my store before? I don't think so. But Antonio denies them having ever met. Still, David cannot shake the feeling he's seen him before. And he's right. A few episodes prior, he was actually at Rose Apothecary paying really close attention to the products. Skin tight clothes aside, do you find Ken attractive? I mean, sure. Then I think you should call him. David, consider it a selfish act on my part. You have only been with me. It's no coincidence that Wendy's Marketplace products are identical to Rose Apothecary's. It's this meticulousness that makes Schitt's Creek such a great show. Look over at their booth and tell me you don't notice any similarities. What the actual f Number 6. All the Name Dropping Before moving to Schitt's Creek, the Roses led extremely glamorous and high-end lives. 
My God, she had Hillary shaking last year at the Clinton Foundation dinner. From where they lived to where they vacationed and perhaps most significantly, who they knew. And while they've had to drastically alter their lifestyle, they aren't about to forget their old famous friends. You ever killed before? Have I ever killed before? No. Elton John used to have an annual hunt at his place in Windsor, but that was more about the lunch. Presumably in a bid to remind viewers of the Rose family's background, the characters constantly name drop celebrities. There's too many to name, over 50 to be precise. I used to text Zac Efron just like a question mark whenever I wanted a booty call. Poor thing would be like buzzing my apartment before I even pressed send. A few notable ones include Alexis's fling with Zac Efron, David's annual visit to Elton John's house, Moira's involvement with the Clintons, and her and Johnny's hanging out with the Castros. John and I used to attend Eyes Wide Shut parties at the Castros, though I'm guessing your evening's activities might be somewhat different. And that barely scrapes the bottom of the barrel of all their lavish stories. Number 5. Man's Best Friend Schitt's Creek has always been a family affair, with the Levy father-son duo at its helm. And he's so cute that he made it all the way onto the Schitt's Creek man's best beer, which I haven't sampled yet, but I'm sure is delicious. So it would be unfathomable to exclude one of the most important members of the pack from the show, Dan's dog, Redmond. So you can see why everyone's all aflutter by this little sausage face right here. While it's quite common to see guest appearances from stars, friends, or families in television or film, Levy incorporated a different kind of cameo here. Redmond is actually the adorable pup you see on a brand of beer that appears in the series. It's not usually this dead. It's like everybody saw you coming and left. We cannot think of a cuter way to make sure he gets a chance to shine like the good dog he is. Number 4. Alexis's Bag of Dresses When Alexis put a bunch of her amazing designer clothes in a bag and parted ways with them, our hearts broke a little. I brought my garbage here for a reason. I thought you might like to wear some of it. Luckily, Twyla has good taste and breathes a second life into the pieces. In fact, the adorable black dress she dons at David and Patrick's wedding might have looked slightly familiar to fans of the show. It's actually a dress we previously saw Alexis rock in season one for Moira's birthday, but she didn't part with everything. She hilariously decided to keep a pink dress that was in the bag, and for good reason. This cute dress makes me smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not quite sure how that one got in there, but anything else in there is yours if you want it. That piece was actually her outfit from the pilot. It is truly a testament to the storytelling power of clothes. Those bags are not for you. My boyfriend bought those for me, so theoretically, they are his. Number three, welcome to Schitt's Creek. What the hell is this? The down sign. Is this the real sign or the joke sign? One of the funniest storylines on the show is the debate surrounding the town sign's lewd imaging in the first season. Somehow, Roland can't really see the problem, and Johnny is unable to unsee it. Roland, you've got this all wrong. Why do you hate me? I don't hate you. I don't hate you. Well, then why do you have a problem with the sign that celebrates my family? It's not. It's just the way they're celebrating. That's well, all. So it's nice to see the welcome sign one last time as Moira and Johnny drive off in the series finale. What is it? Just wanted one last look. Except something's a little different about it this time. The faces on it now belong to the roses, so that they remain forever a part of Schitt's Creek. It's Roland's final present to them. It's an endearing and heartfelt gesture that perfectly symbolizes how the town and the family learn to embrace each other. We may have shed a tear or ten. Number two, an homage to sweaters. Do you like this sweater? Jared Leto gave it to me and I've always been on the fence about it. When one thinks of David Rose, a few things come to mind. A witty attitude, hilarious one-liners, and perhaps most notably, impeccable taste in clothing. Funky is a neon t-shirt you buy at an airport gift shop next to a bejeweled iPhone case. This, this, is luxury. Over the course of the show's six seasons, there was no shortage of his iconic sweaters for fans to feast their eyes on. Well, what better way to honor these pieces than to gather them all in one place? That is exactly what the show did in the finale, when they're all seen sitting in the background as David is in a panic. No, we should have gotten married indoors. You said indoor weddings are tacky. No, I said most weddings are tacky, and they often take place indoors. Mm. They're perfectly organized, just waiting to be worn. This fun little nod to his signature look goes a long way in cementing the huge role fashion played in the creek. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Musical Memories Johnny, Moira, David, and Alexis are not overly emotional people. Oh my god. Oh my god. They tend to stick to sarcastic jabs and more subtle displays of love. But once in a while, they let their guards down, which gives way to really sweet moments. Just say it, Moira. We love you both very much. Love you too. I'm a lucky man. I didn't know. What love was love you too. One such instance takes place at the end of season two when the roses exchange I love you's as they dance to James Morrison's Precious Love. Love, 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 precious love. It's an extremely heartwarming scene. Fittingly, the Jazzagals cover that same song at the start of David and Patrick's wedding. This callback is a perfect example of the love and warmth that defines the show. The care that went into telling these characters' stories thoughtfully is undeniable. This is love, 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 precious love. Yes, love, 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 precious love. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.